Hello, Actosage here on the Sage channel, and as per usual upon a Thursday, an update has come out for Space Engineers. Well, this update was a fair bit more important than anything we've gotten in quite some time. Today's update has brought forth this block to the game. Now, this isn't just some standard new block. In fact, we haven't gotten a new block in quite some time. This is a truly important new block because it changes a lot of the way that we're going to be building ships in the future because it's a jump drive. It allows the ship to really quickly teleport basically from one point to another. And as you can see here, it's got some build states to it. Its building requirements are as follows on the right, I believe right here. There you go. It's actually, um, I don't know, it seems relatively cheap. Gravity generators cost a bit, but you only need 20 of them. And the way it works, if we were to go ahead and turn around here, we got these little tiny ships, and I'm just going to jump one of these really quickly to show you. So, I hop in here, I'm going to press my number one button, you get this big message, I'll go over this in more detail. I'm just going to drain its batteries first by jumping it. So you can see there's a little countdown while I hit the jump button, and... Well, I won't any second now. There we go. Or completely different. You can see we've uh, gone quite the distance away just with one jump drive. So, if we go ahead and press K now, and by the way, you'll see little green lights on the side there that indicates its jump, or its power level as it recharges. We can go ahead and actually look at the jump drive in our UI, and we're going to go over the stuff at the very right first. We have its max required input, which is how much power it's going to draw when it's charging, and we have its max stored power, which is the amount it actually has to store up before you can even use it. Below that, we have its current input, which is, of course, because it's recharging, the stored power, which you can see it's trying to get up to that max stored power, and then fully charged in, just like a battery, it gives you an estimated time. So it takes six minutes to recharge this thing if you fully drain it. You're not going to drain it fully if you don't jump its max distance. Now, onto the left here, we got its box standard stuff of toggling power, show and terminal, show block and control stuff its name, HUD, and then recharge on and off just like a battery, and then here comes the actual new stuff, the distance. So you can see here, let's go ahead and actually take this strange little ship and aim it back at origin, there we go. And let's go back into here and you see the jump drive, I can change this distance. So right now it's set to jump five kilometers. So that is, actually no, it's not showing correctly. Right now it's only showing five kilometers, but it can actually jump a fair bit farther. It's just because it's recharging currently, it's not updating this. So once it's recharged, it'll actually, it'll actually be able to set how far we jump. Below that, we have blind jump, which basically means if it says blind jump there, you're gonna jump however far you've set your distance in whatever direction you are currently facing. If we scroll down farther, you have GPS location. So of course you get a GPS location, if you don't remember, just by going to the GPS tab at the top right and creating a GPS location from here. Remember what you can also do is do a new from current position, like I just did right here, and select this and actually tweak the numbers. So if I wanted to jump to a specific location and I wanted to be able to visually see where I'm going, I can do stuff like that where I've just made a GPS point where I am and change the number to move it way up there above me. So now if I was to go back into the jump drive section here, select that ExoSage 1, click select, you'll see that the name right here is changed. And then once this is charged in four minutes, we can jump to that. And I'm actually just going to skip ahead till it's charged. And there we go. Power is all stored up. And you see that max jump distance is now been updated to 2000 kilometers. That's actually a massive number. That's why we're so far out. Because, you know, on average, an antenna goes 50 kilometers out. So that's only the first two decimal places right there. So that is a huge, huge distance. You'll also notice that now I can't move this sliding bar. And that's because we've gone ahead and selected a location. So let's actually go ahead and jump to that. You'll notice there's no jump button here. What you actually have to do is go ahead and click and drag this down or right click it and select the jump button. And if you have multiple cockpits on a ship, oh dear. Only the cockpit set for main, so as you go to your cockpit, you'll have the main cockpit button. Only the cockpit with main turned on will be able to use this if you have any with main cockpit turned on. The other ones won't be able to use the jump function. This is to prevent other people from jumping in your ship and just stealing. So anyway, now that you've got that down there set to the jump, let's just go ahead and press 1 and it'll jump us to that location. Shh, please note that it isn't actually going to jump to that like, location because it's too close. It has to at least be 5,000 meters away. So 
Let's go ahead to our GPS really quickly to demonstrate that this does function. And let's just up that to seven real quick. There we go. And so now let's go ahead and hit that. It gives us once again the same readout and I'll actually go over it. Jump destination that's showing the uh, waypoint name right there. Distance, it's telling you. Achievable percentage of jump. So if there's something in the way theoretically it would stop you or if maybe your reactors aren't functioning, it'll give you an idea of how far you'll actually make it. Weight of transport mass apparently right now it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference but I'm presuming too much weight and it'll actually start reducing the jump distance that you'll actually make it and then operational jump drive so if you have a ton of jump drives you'll be able to see how many are on board and seated crew on board so theoretically they'll also show you if people are not seated so you can tell your friends hey get in a seat because if you're not in a seat a cryopod or something else a small ship attached to this ship you'll be left behind so anyway, let's hit yes on that once again, it's going to do its little countdown thing. And again, we don't have to aim at that. We can aim at any direction. I didn't need to be aiming at that even to engage it since the coordinates are set. And there we go. It's jumped us up pretty much to it. It can be a little bit inaccurate at times, but considering how far it's jumping, it's not too bad. Also, you'll notice that at the bottom right there, our power usage is zero because it was such a small jump. We've actually fully recharged right away. So small jumps won't take too long to recharge from. It's only that when you fully drain the drive that you'll find yourself needing to wait a full six minutes to recharge one of these things. Anyway, let's go ahead and click the remove button right there and it goes back to just being a blinded jump. Let's actually go ahead and just select the origin back where we started, click select, add that there, and then once again, hit our number one button. And just to demonstrate, we don't have to be looking at it. That'll do right there. And it is a bit odd that the uh, camera zoom will affect you even from a far out zoom, and even if we are in spectator. <laughs> the camera will still do its effect. The effect I'm hoping is mostly placeholder. And let's do an F6 right now, where did it jump us to? Uh, there. You can see where we came out of the, well, I don't want to say it came out of warp, but where we jumped into, so not exactly there. It's a pretty interesting thing. Let's go back actually to the main base and uh, just show you a few more things. Now you might have heard me mention that you don't want to leave people behind and they can get into a small ship. That's right, small ships can be transported around with us so now your carriers can be more useful at transporting small fighters long, long distances. And you don't need just a landing gear, you can also use a proper connector block to transfer materials and keep the ship in place and we'll jump with those as well. And just to demonstrate that it does function and also demonstrate that you can have multiple jump drives we got this ship here i've gone ahead and disabled one that way we can use this one jump drive with a blind jump to jump us all the way out there and in fact i could theoretically have these set the two different jump points so i can have this jump drive right here set to take us out to the gps coordinate we set out there and this jump drive too set to take us back to origin and so now, theoretically, on the press of the number, ooh, wait, that was the wrong button. On the press of the number one button, or number two button, it should take us out there. And you can see it's drained the one battery right away. It's gone to its green, so it's going to be recharging ever so slowly. And it's taking us all the way out here, and once again, it's brought the small ship with us. And then, of course, I can aim back, well, actually, remember, I don't even have to aim. I can aim anywhere and press the number four button to activate the other gravity drive, gravity drive, no, other jump drive and take us back there. All the while carrying that small ship with us without any hitches. It actually works amazingly well. So often this game has <laughs> such horrendous flukes, but this is working great. And you see it's a little tiny bit inaccurate, but the more jump drives you have, the more accurate it always seems to be. Let's go ahead and delete this really quickly, that way we don't have a silly beacon cluttering up our view. Get back to base. Got some more things to show you. And the first one of those things is going to be that you can, of course, jump a drive without you on it. So we're going to go ahead and just, I believe this is set to a blind jump, yes. Uh, there we go, jump drive. And yeah, blind jump. So we can hit the one button, start it jumping. And of course, if you jump out of the cockpit, it's going to go without you. Unfortunately, last time I checked this, 
This screen still does its warp effect even though I'm currently nowhere near the ship. Yep, there you go. It's unfortunate that the ship itself doesn't do some sort of stretch or something, but followed by like a white flash. I'd love to see the Battlestar Galactica effect added, but I get the feeling, like I said earlier, this is placeholder. So there you go. You can actually start to jump and hop out of the ship, even if I was standing directly on top of that ship when it jumped. Because I'm not in the seat, it'll leave you behind. Keep that in mind. So what else do we have here? We got this large ship in front of us with a billion and one jump drives. And this is to demonstrate that you can indeed, and let's go ahead and hop inside the little control area here, jump monstrous, monstrous distances. So let's hop in here and let's just hit our number one button, shall we? And this is going to be a blind jump, I believe. Yep. Some humongous, humongous distance away. So there we go, jump complete, and how far away are we now? Yeah, pretty far away, 25,000, oh, 25 million meters away. That's 25,000 kilometers. So yeah, you can jump humongous distances with all these. And of course, this is going to take six minutes to recharge because, well, <laughs> that's the maximum speed at which you can charge. I could keep adding reactors to the end of time, it's not going to charge faster. It's but like a battery, it only has a set charge rate, so more power in isn't going to make a difference because it's not going to be able to take any more in. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead until this thing has actually been recharged and uh, jump ourselves back. By the way, an easy way to tell when your jump drives have finished recharging if you cannot see them, because a lot of times you're probably going to end up putting them inside a ship to keep them safe, is to check your power usage at the bottom right there. Often you'll see that drop down once everything's done charging. And there you go, our power usage just dropped back down and you can see all of our jump drives have a switch to a nice little blue there. So what we can do now is actually, let's, instead of using a GPS cord, let's actually line up the little icon here. A silly little way of doing it. Since I have the antenna of this ship at the front, I can sort of line up the two. And let's actually do a blind jump back there. And let's just make sure we are set to a blind jump by selecting this jump drive. I have a group with all of them. And then I have a group with just one of them so I can control one specific settings for loading and coordinates and stuff. That's the same one I have set up down below to just press the jump thing. And yeah, blind jump. Also, you notice here that this has a much higher range and I can drag this through it. And if I do a control click here, it doesn't quite show your exact distance. It shows, well, sort of a decimal range it's basically it's showing the percentage so if i click here it says we're at 52 percent of our max but you can see that that number on the right there goes all the way up to the now huge distance we can jump because of all the different jump drives so they're smart enough to understand all of that i wish a lot of this was on our ui but hopefully in the future we'll get that maybe whenever they redo the ui we'll actually have a gui so it can have its own little window and click and drag it about and you know, press alt or control or tab or something and actually be able to use our mouse on it. Anyway, let's go ahead and I think we got our blind jump set up pretty much at full distance and let's go ahead and click yes on that. There we go. And once again, I think we overshot it by a little bit. Over. Okay. Where to go? Okay, yeah, we overshot it by a fair amount there, unfortunately. Yikes. Uh, please note, though, that the jump drives will overload your ship. They draw only a little bit of power compared when they're actually going compared to when they're just charging. Because they draw quite a decent amount when they're charging. But uh, they're not a smart system that detects how much extra power you have on your ship and only uses what it has extra. It'll actually go ahead and push you into overload, trying to pull that amount of power. It's pretty cool nonetheless though, and of course that means you just have to build your ship logically and not just have two billion of those and one little dinky reactor. It'll still charge them, mind you, but all of your other ship systems, except for maybe gravity and lights, will shut off, but your thrusters and gyroscopes and stuff like that will be turned off. I really love this update. It is a lot of fun to jump around, especially in small jumps where you don't have a large recharge time, just to jump about really quickly between, you know, five or six thousand meters or maybe even a little bit more to just hop back and forth between spots and explore. It's actually a huge amount of fun. Anyway, once again, I'm going to cut ahead until we're charged up and actually get back to base. I've just realized also I'm heading towards the wrong thing. We don't want to go over there. We want to go over 
There. Dear God. Dear God. There we go. Everything's charged up. And you can see down at the bottom there, I have our three and four keys bound. This is to increase and decrease, or decrease and increase going left to right, how far our jump drive will jump us using a free jump. But, of course, unfortunately, there's nowhere on the UI where it actually shows the number. I believe it actually shows the number down there, or at least in theory it would, but there's not enough room for it. So, let's go ahead. Let's see. We are 1,241,000 meters away, and we're moving at 104 meters per second. Let's go ahead and grab our jump drive there. And 1 million, what did I say? 1,240,000. 1, so, grab our jump drive, and we just need to set this number to... 1240, I believe. Oh, dear God. That'll have to do, I think. 5%. Yeah. We can drop it by a little tiny bit here, can't we? Like that. That'll do. We'll be off by a tiny bit, but it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and hit our blind jump again towards the target. And once again, it's going to go ahead and jump us. And you see only two of the reactors have changed color, indicating I only need to use two of those to jump that distance. And away we go, right? Now, there we go. And you'll see that our speed has kept. We're still moving at 104.4 meters per second. And where is the damn thing? Oh, it's down there. And of course, since that was such a minimal jump, it's only it's used up one of those re jumps. Blah. It's used up one of those jump drives completely, and the other one's only been slightly used. So uh, what we can do here is grab, let's say, jump drive number four, and add it to our jump here. And then, of course, we're going to have to be cautious because we uh, tweaked only that one jump drive. Let's go ahead and do this once I've selected all the jump drives. And it'll set its distance to whatever you like. And let's just drop it down to the... Oh, let's just say... Uh, yeah, not, yeah, 40 kilometers sound good. There we go. Yeah, right there. And let's hit our number two button. And it'll jump us right away. You see, I only needed to use one of those for that. So you can have a bunch of different jump drives set up for different jump distances. And I missed slightly. I just realized I was aiming down there, so whoops. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it got us pretty close. Awesome. Anyways, I think that's about it for this update. As I believe I said earlier, it is fantastic fun to jump these ships around, especially in quick succession when you are doing these small little jumps like that one I just did right there. You can actually go ahead and press 3 a little bit more. Again, I wish there was something on the UI to indicate how far we are actually being, how far are we actually setting these things to jump to. But of course, I guess it's a bit finicky when you can have different jump drives set at different distances. So, who knows? Anyway, guys, that's it. Oh dear, I've overshot it again. Thanks a bunch for watching, and I shall see you guys next time. Ta ta. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to go that far. No, I'm hitting the down distance button. Oh, it's only affecting the number one one. Dag, man, but that's why. Me. Oh, right, and I should also point out that at the moment, you can pretty much jump through ob... Oh, wait, no, what? Oh, maybe you can't jump through objects anymore. They fixed it.